What's going on, guys? MMA Island team, we're back. We got the full squad here. We're making the picks. This next fight is a, another good big fight going into this one. We got the second fight of the night, and it's going to be Nicholas Stotz, the UFC newcomer, taking on Ramazan and Neve uh, from Dagestan. Um, so we're going to lead it on to Zach to p start this one up. So we have Ramazan Amiv coming in, and in the UFC so far, he is three and one. His la his only loss coming to I think too big of a step up for him in Anthony Rocco Martin because Anthony Rocco Martin is one of those guys in the sixteen to twenty five range, which makes the welterweight division so deep. Anyway, what makes Amiv so good, in my opinion, is his striking defense. <laughs> his striking defense is elite. He can block a ton of shots. 70% defense so far. That means he's an elite defensive fighter and coming up against guys who are usually, usually guys that come up from the UFC, they're making their debut. They like to come out very, very aggressive. They like to come on. They like to put on a more aggressive game. And I think that's what Stoltz is going to do. And with the defensive style of Ramazan Amiv, because you know, he doesn't put out a lot of output yet. He forces his opponents to not fight, um, to not put out a lot of volume as well. His takedown game is good. And if, I mean, Stoltz is not going to take him down. He's fought bigger, stronger guys. And I think he's a more technical striker as well, considering the fact that this is not his first time in the UFC. He's fought the better competition. He's going to block almost all the shots that Stoltz sends at him. This is one of the easier picks, at least for me, because I just everything stylistically tells me Ramazan Amiv is going to bounce back and win this fight. So moving on to the next one. You know, easy, next person. easy, easy. You think it's going to be easy coming up against a guy whose head coach's name is uh, – hold on, let me pull it up. Oh. Sasha Papa – hold on. Sasha Papandiek. Yes, I do. Uh, no. Yeah, all right, so this guy, Nicholas Stoltze. So he is a kickboxer. He's a stand-up fighter. But he's got an affinity for choking motherfuckers out and making them tap. He's got a lot of submission finishes in his career, but he's labeled as a kickboxer. So we know he's going to be at least able in both areas. I don't know if he's going to be able to match up uh, ground-wise or physical strength-wise with a, a Dagestani athlete like that. Because let's be honest, the way that their physical, like the, the, the level that their physical acumen that is at, is at a different level than most, but I'm going to, I'm going to just go for it. I'm picking Nicholas Stoltze. I think that, he, um, you know, I, I, I like, I like a guy who is very too, like, I like, I like a guy who's dual ended. I like a guy who can do it on both ends. So, um, I, I'm just gonna, uh, I'm going to go decision too. I don't think it get, goes to a finish. I think there's a lot of cool grappling transitions though. Yeah. So that leads it on to me here. Um, I, I'm also going to go with Stoats in this one. Uh, I feel like this dude is a very, very underrated striker. Uh, I'm pretty sure this dude came from a kickbox kickboxing background as well. Uh, yes. a younger guy here, fresh into the UFC, uh, with how, with how good he is striking, he actually has more subs and KOs, which is weird coming from a kickboxing background as well. Um, Maybe it's all a trick. I mean, Hey, you never know. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is the thing I, that looking, looking at how people talk, what people talk about Amiv and I, I kind of expected you to bring this up, Zach, and he did. Uh, Amiv not having, like, he doesn't show that much volume. You saw that in the, in the Rocco Martin fight. Obviously Rocco Martin is a beast. Um, maybe not a beast, but he's a, he's a good guy in the welterweight division. Like you said, a little bit. I'd too say he's a physical beast. Up. Like dude's strong and cut up. And there you go. There you go. <laughs> he's a beast. Um, like they're all beasts. I think what this comes down to for me is who's going to be a little bit more active. And with Stoltz being such a great, such an underrated striker in my eyes, I think he's going to have way more volume than Amiv. Uh, Amiv coming off a loss, I don't think there's any way that he can finish Stoltz. Uh, I think Stoltz is a little bit too smart to get in, involved in those grappling exchanges, which honestly is kind of Amiv's only hope in this case. Uh, three of Stoltz's last four coming by finish. I really think Stoltz is probably going to finish this one. I'm going to go with the KO in round two. I'm feeling pretty confident in this one. Calculator is is as well. 67.1% chance for Nicholas Stoltz in this one. Two underdogs in a row. I'm a to take the win or to – so for your percentage, is it to take a win or to get a knockout? A win, a win. That's something I'm going to add to the calculator definitely, but it's a 67.1% but it's a chance to win for Stoltz. Okay. All right. So I'm uh, going to go with Zach on this one. Um, I think Amiv will take it. First off – Looking at the betting odds right now, he is the uh, the third biggest favorite on the card, minus four twenty five. You don't see you don't see don't favorites like that. Don't give a like fuck, that. mate. 
you don't see you don't see favorites like that lose very often. Um, he's had multiple fights in the UFC, three and one in UFC. He's fought the higher level of competition. Um, so just for those reasons alone, uh, I don't really know much about either guy, but I, I know some of the dudes are. Uh, I mean, he's fought, so I'll probably take him by decision. One more thing I would like to add before we go is a comparison quickly to, I don't know, just finish up justifying my point because maybe I wanted to say a bit more. I would like to compare Ramazan Amiv to a welterweight version of Jusier Formiga. Now, Jusier Formiga is very effective because his defensive style shuts down high offense, uh, high offense strikers and makes their striking landing percentage go way, way down. I think that this is going to happen to Nicholas Stoltz because of the way he shuts down his opponent's volume. Anyway, just wanted to add that in. <laughs> okay. Hey, you, you comparing it to Formiga just tells me that he's that he's going to get finished by leg kicks in the first round this time. That's I'm what I was saying. thinking. I was like, how are his shins? <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we got we got an even. We're split. 2v2. Who do you agree with? You guys got to break the tie. Comment and uh, let us know who you guys have winning this one. We got two and two. We need we need you to break the tie. We absolutely need it. We also Leave it in the comments. There you go. We also need you guys to check out the other videos. We got all the fight picks. There's 15 fights in this card. Go check out the rest. Uh, We appreciate you guys for watching, and uh, go check out the other ones.